Hello there, today I want to talk about what you need to get into astrophotography. Now, you don't need to spend a, a fortune. It can be as little as nothing if you've got a good smartphone in your pocket, because a lot of smartphones now are pretty good in low light using computational photography. And you can simply get something like a, a smartphone holder, pop it on a tripod with your phone, compose your shot, probably put in, actually put in landscape mode like that, maybe compose your shot have some foreground interest and get like the nice milky way with something in the foreground and that would be a nice sort of like night nightscape and phones are quite capable of that now uh, but if you want a bit more sort of control and a bit more future proofing like you want to eventually attach um, a, a camera to a, a telescope at prime focus you can move into things like DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. And nowadays that doesn't need to be expensive at all. Like there's companies like in the UK, we've got mpb.com, which sell second-hand cameras really affordably and they've all been checked out. Now I'm not in any way connected with them. I just use them a lot because I, I just think they're great value and you've got the security, which you don't get if you buy a camera on say eBay or Craigslist, Facebook, something like that. You've, you've got some security and they don't really cost much more than getting one off eBay. So I just don't see the point in going eBay and risking it. For example, I looked today on mpb.com. The equivalent in the US is KEH by the way, and I'm sure there's equivalents in different continents. So the, you, you just have to get online and look for where you're based really but look for um, second-hand camera retailers some uh, camera stores will sell second-hand cameras as well but in the uk i can highly recommend mpb.com and i've seen uh, my uh, peers in the us other youtubers highly recommend keh people like tony northrop highly who's a, a well-known photographer on the internet um he recommends keh so but yeah, uh, for example, I looked on mpb.com today and you could literally get a functional Canon 300D, which was Canon's first digital DSLR, SL, digital SLR for 17 pounds, which is phenomenal really when you think about it. That's nothing, is it? That's like, I don't know, um, pizza. For the price of a pizza, you can get a fully functional DSLR camera, albeit only six megapixels with a slow processor. I've had the pleasure of using one of those for astrophotography in the past, a 300D, as well as many 350Ds. I think they're called um, Rebel XT or something in the US, uh, the 350D. But £17 and then you just need a lens. Uh, I looked at the lenses, the EF uh, kit zoom start from about £20 as well. But uh, better still would be something like a nifty 50 prime focus lens. Um, because what a kit zoom is, it's got a, a variety of focal lengths. So the lenses move to different focal lengths from 18 to say 55. And because it's not it's kind of a jack of all trades, master of none. But a prime lens only focuses on one focal length, for example, 50 mil. So therefore the quality at that 50 mil is better than all the uh, focal lengths from 18 to 55 on the kit lens. So I'd always recommend getting a prime lens. Uh, the prime lenses on MPB I checked out are about 50 pounds. So for 70 pounds, you can get a fully functional camera with a prime, a good prime lens, fast f1.8 prime lens for astrophotography. Now you could simply set a lean it on something, set a delay on the camera to take the photo, so you can get well away from it, so it's not being shaken about when it actually takes the picture. But ideally, you want it on a tripod, so you can more easily compose your shot. And obviously that's going to add a bit more money. So maybe you're looking around about £100 total for something that's going to be good enough for landscape astrophotography. But up from that, uh, I'd recommend getting into tracking with the Earth's rotation so you can take longer exposures. And for that, you need a star tracker. And the star tracker that many of us use, I use, is the Skywatcher Star Adventurer. And that retails new for 269 and the tripod for it 69. 
So we're looking at 340, add a camera and a lens. You're looking at about £400 for that complete setup to be able to take long exposures of the sky. So, but ideally to outdo a smartphone, smartphones are so good now that to outdo a smartphone, you probably need a bit of a better DSLR or a mirrorless camera. But I looked on the MPB again, and you can even get a full frame Canon 5D for 150 odd pounds, 159 pounds I think it was, which is incredible. That's a very large sensor that's gonna suck in a lot of light. Again, it would work with that nifty 50. So you're talking 200 pounds for a nifty 50 and a full frame camera. I'm, I'm not um, brand biased. It's just that I've got, a, I'm not experienced with Nikon other than their, their little one inch sensor, J1, I think I had. But I've had lots of Canons, Fujis, Sonys, um, but the Sonys are gonna be a bit more expensive. Like the full frame Sonys about four or 500 pounds, but the Canon, is about 150 quid now for the 5D and probably 250 for the 5D Mark II, which, can also, which is the first uh, full frame video uh, capable camera, just uh, per chance. Uh, anyway, I'm waffling on. But yeah, to outdo a smartphone because they're so good, you would probably be better off getting, um, if, you've, if you've got a smartphone, you, to begin with, you're probably better off using a, and you want to attach it to like a, a telescope or or use it on a track shot. You can put that on this bracket and put it on a star tracker and take long exposures with that to a certain degree. Um, it might perform actually better than a 20 quid DSLR or mirrorless camera. It might do. Uh, but for sure, something like a full frame for £150 is going to definitely be your smartphone, for sure. And it will be a bit more flexible, like you'll be able to attach it to a telescope later on at prime focus. But you can do a lot with your smartphone now. You can get smartphone adapters to attach them to your telescope. And that would be good for taking pictures of the moon, planets and bright deep sky objects with some, um, you know, exposures of several seconds. You can stack them together in software. And, uh, but yeah, anything beyond the star tracker, you're getting a bit more expensive because you, you're gonna start needing go-to to hunt down, a go-to mount to hunt down those fainter objects because with a star tracker, it doesn't find objects for you. It just tracks with the rotation of the earth, but it's fine if you're finding objects that are easy to find like, the Orion Nebula in the Sword of Orion or Andromeda, which is our neighboring galaxy. So it's quite big in the sky and still relatively easy to find. But the more faint, trickier to find objects, a go-to mount would be better. And then at the budget end, you're looking at converting something like a, a Skywatch AZ GTI into equatorial mode, so it can track with the Earth's rotation for longer exposures. And you can basically, they're about the same price as a star tracker, but you need to add an equatorial wedge. You need to flash the firmware to, to make it EQ mode. And you need to, if you're using a telescope or a heavy lens, you need to attach a counterweight via the M12 thread that's on that mount. But I think as a sort of, to begin with video of what to look for, I think that's probably enough for today, but I do intend to make a much more in-depth video about this because I think it's a really important subject. I've literally just thrown this together today. I've only had this morning, I've only got this morning to bullet point script, film it, edit, get all together. So this isn't up to my usual standards. I do apologize for that. But if you got this far, thank you very much for watching. Big special thank you to my channel members, Dan the Man, Four Grapples and Ziggy Friends. And until next time, tell those clouds to sod off.